Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here and talk about perspectives, like everyone else here who has extremely different ones. So thank you guys for being here. I'd like to talk about a little voice in our head, that little child. No matter how old we grow, there's always going to be that child inside our heads, thinking and feeling differently about something than we do. Like the child in my head right now thinks that the strings of my violin are like chords of my heart. And every musical note played on them is an emotion. Now, if I had listened to people who told me not to learn how to play the violin because it's a difficult instrument, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't have been able to help people out through that. However, even back in fourth grade, I had enough sense to know not to, not to listen to people and <laughs> what they think. I think as a kid, it comes naturally to you. But as you grow older, you realize that you live in a society that's constantly telling you that it matters what people think. So from then on, the child in me got up and took, a, took that as a challenge and actually learned how to play the violin and never gave up. I grew up and that child never did. Stayed as positive as ever, trying to explore new things, trying to travel, meet new people, think outside the bubble that we all live in. I grew up and I went to medical school, hoping to become a doctor, just like my parents, to hoping to make a difference in someone's life someday. And, and I did, because what followed later changed my perspective on a lot of things. Now, 24 years of my life on this planet, so much has happened, and it has changed my perspective on a lot of things. In my third year of medical school, inspired by a cancer patient, I decided to play my part and do something. So I started to teach the violin for charity, raise a fund for people who used to come to wards but didn't get treated because they didn't have no money. I was actually told not to do it because in the society, apparently, I was not supposed to do it. It's not respectful, and I'm a girl, and they said it's not a good idea. Don't do it. However, the child in me did, obviously, and I ended up making a huge difference. By the end of my medical school, in my final year, I actually got to learn a new kind of perspective. I got to learn about loss and how it feels like to lose. Just, just lose someone that you love with all your heart. I was very close to my uncle and I lost him to thyroid cancer after months of taking care of him through my final year of medical school. And he ended up losing his battle. Just when I thought things could not get worse, a week after that, I ended up self-diagnosing myself with the same kind of cancer while checking a patient in my surgical ward. Now, it's, it's another thing to watch a scary movie, but this felt like being stuck in one. <laughs> People told me everything is going to be fine. However, it just got worse. After a few months, I lost my baby brother, who just didn't wake up one day. And that, the child in my head in that moment tripped so hard, hit his head, and didn't know what's going on. So that really positive, hopeful voice in my head just didn't know what to say. How, learning from that experience and coming out stronger was one thing, and I can say that now, but back then, not knowing what depression felt like, of course, studying about it is one thing, but not knowing what it felt like was extremely confusing. I couldn't understand what I was going through and why. And I wondered, 
I wondered what millions of, other, millions of other people go through every single day. I was given countless justifications of about why this happened to me. Uh, I was told, you know, it, don't worry about it, things get better. Um, nobody, like not even one person told me it's okay to feel what I was feeling. And the lack of ignorance about mental health really surprised me. It surprised me because I survived what I went through, but not a lot of people do. So I decided to do two things about it. Number one, I decided to change people's perspective about me not being able to graduate on time after everything that's happened. With the help of my husband, I actually studied somehow. I passed my exams and I graduated on time to become a doctor. It was a very in-your-face kind of moment. Number two, I decided to take up um, a psychiatric ward rotation for my house job, which is after you graduate, just so I can see for myself what it is about. Because the people around me always told me mental health professionals are insane people treating insane people. And it made me so sad to hear that because people around you expect you to suppress all your emotions, to somehow ignore the fact that you feel a certain way, and they brush it off like it's nothing. Feel okay, look okay is what you're told. And if someone's extremely not okay, then that's just, they're faking it. <laughs> people just think it all just goes away, and it doesn't. I think, the sooner you accept and really tell yourself that, okay, this is how I feel, and look at it from that perspective, that this has happened to me and I can, I can accept it, is when you are able to look yourself in the mirror one day and not just look at your face, but actually see. See the kind of strong person that you are and have become because of what has happened to you. And looking at it from that way is a completely different perspective. And you do, you do that after you've accepted what you're going through. You learn that life is like playing a violin in public and not knowing the instrument, but you learn it as you go on. And at any point, you can play one wrong note or you, one of the strings can break and everything completely changes about that piece. You're in control in that moment. What do you do? Do you walk off the stage? Or do you stand up tall, finish what you were playing, and take a bow? Now, when you're at that point of acceptance and you're seeing life in a completely different point of view, that child in your head sees life as a masquerade a party of people where everyone's wearing a mask. And you are, you're born and you're pushed into this room and you're asked to just somehow figure out what's going on. You feel very awkward at first. You might trip over a few things. And then you finally start to get used to your surroundings. And in other words, you grow up and you realize that these, this is my surrounding and these are the people that I have to live with. So you go on in this party that's called life and you meet all sorts of people. You'll meet people that will say the nicest things to your face and turn around and say something equally offensive about you. You'll meet people that pass you by like you don't exist You'll meet people that will spill their drinks on your dress and not even apologize. You'll meet people that will be nice to you the entire night just because they have their eyes set on dessert, that they think they can be nice to you and you will gladly give it to them. Then you'll also find people in a corner that are judging everybody at the party, just won't have fun and can't see anyone else happy. What do you do? Exactly. You learn. You observe and learn in this party that you've been pushed into. And then 
you accept. You accept that there are always going to be people like that. And before you walk out that party feeling disappointed and losing all the hope in the world, you might just run into people that forgot to wear a mask to the party. And these are people that are content with themselves and don't want anything else from you except for the pleasure of your company. And that's when you realize, had I walked out the party before I met these people, my entire perspective about this time would have been completely different. But somehow they made it better for you. Before you walk out the party, before we all walk out of the party, I think we need to find something that we like, something that truly makes us happy. These are people that will laugh so hard that it's contagious and you will start laughing. These are people that genuinely make you happy. They are what they are. That is what you need in your life. And that's so relevant to your mental health because you need to take that seriously. And if you see it like that, then you really see how important it is to minus and all the negativity that's bringing you down and bring in all the positivity that's around you. That's so important in being a happy person despite everything that you've been through because at some point when you've accepted everything that's happened, you realize that it doesn't have to define who you are, but what you do about it will define what you become in the future. And that's one way of looking at it. You help yourself and you grow and you will be the happiest person that you can be and that's all that matters. It's okay not to be okay, but it's really not okay to not accept that and ask for help. Thank you.